Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be looking at this bike. This is a 2018 Honda CRF 250L Rally. It's a great bike and it's fairly inexpensive and it's probably one of the best dual sports available right now. Let's go check it out. It's got inverted forks, it's got all the really nice things a dual sport should have. But the best thing about this bike really is the fuel injection. This bike gets about 80 miles to the gallon. And if you're going fast, maybe 75. It's got a very small gas tank. The CRF 250L Rally in particular came in two versions. You got the ABS and the standard Rally. This is the standard Rally. I don't know about you, but I prefer not having ABS. But the new CRF 300s, for example, you can push a button to disable ABS. So that's a really great feature to have. The engine on this bike is a 249cc liquid-cooled 20 degree single cylinder four stroke. It has 43 millimeter telescoping inverted forks with 11 inches of travel. It also has 10.6 inches of ground clearance. Seat height is at 35.2 inches. The fuel capacity is only 2.7 gallons, which is not great, but because of the bike's great MPG, it gets about 80 to 90 miles to the gallon. You're really going to be doing about 160 miles before it's empty. And the curb weight is about 341 pounds for the non-ABS version and 346 pounds for the ABS version. So it is a, kind of a big, heavy bike. Well, up front, you have a very large single uh, rotor on the left side and with a two-pod caliper uh, brake, which is really good for it. This big fan of the inverted forks. First of all, they look great and they're much more contemporary but also this bike comes with guards to protect the fork seals one of the issues that you have when you're riding off-road is that a lot of debris will get into this stanchions part so often you might have fork seals that bust over time this really helps it out so i'm glad that honda put this on from the factory I have a very high mounted beak which looks great it tells you that this bike is not really a road-oriented bike. Generally, when you have a small dual sport, the headlights on them are terrible. You cannot see anything at night, but these are extremely good at night because... And this one comes with a headlight guard, which is non-stock. It's by SRC, so it's good to have if you intend on doing a lot of off-roading because you don't want to damage these really good headlights. Yeah, it is amazing when you ride a bike that's a dual sport. The headlights are often barely usable at night. The standard version, of course, does not have this. If you look at the right side, you'll see that the standard version looks completely different. Um, the bodywork on this really sets it apart, but you have a lot of plastic covering this. This could be a good or bad thing because if you do maintenance, then you're gonna to have to pull out all of this plastic, but it's extremely well designed and it protects the engine extremely well. So you have this big shroud that goes all the way down here and then it connects with the front guard. And this model has crash bars that have been already used. If you intend on going off-road, this is a very important thing to have. I put this probably the first thing on most of my bikes is crash bars because if you do any dual sporting you know that you're going to be crashing. So on this right side you can start to tell how small the engine is. Hey, this is like tiny. So you have a, a filler for the oil. It's not a dipstick which I'm very happy about it. Over there you have a sight glass for your oil. Uh, there is a little bit of vibration that comes through the foot peg. There are better foot pegs that have a little rubber because if you're doing a lot of road driving where I live, there's not a lot of off-roading so you have to travel to the trail so you'll feel a lot of this vibration coming through here. Traveling through the backside, you have the plastic really well designed and it covers the exhaust. You know, like you could always leave it up to Honda to design things extremely well. There was a time where Honda was skipping on the design elements of things, but even now these bikes and including scooters, even the least expensive versions of scooters are extremely well designed. 
but I do like it. This one's got the stock exhaust, which I think is a better option for this area. Reason you want the stock silencer, in my opinion, if you live in a bigger city, is that sometimes you have to do some stealth riding. This doesn't call a lot of attention to you. So if you have an aftermarket exhaust, it makes a whole lot more noise. People instinctively look for whatever's in the woods. I like to be stealthy and the stock exhaust is extremely quiet. Swing arm, you have a rear disc brake. You have just a very standard type of swing arm, nothing special. The rear, you have one whole unit with the plate. I think people will probably opt out to put just a plate right underneath the taillight, but this one seems to be very substantial. It doesn't move around. It's, it's got quite a bit of reinforcement. The blinkers are large, but they're very visible, and that's what I want in a small dual sport. This one, it has a aftermarket cargo rack, which is really good because if you travel, you want to be able to put stuff on your bike, and people do tour on this particular bike. It's extremely reliable. You know, these Hondas, they just last for a very long time, even with the small engine. This one's got like a small trunk, which is more than enough for carrying just small day trip sort of things. You could just get saddlebags and put it. This at one point did come with the, the rack for the side, but the previous owner did remove it. But there is quite a bit of aftermarket for this bike so you can get aftermarket pannier holders as well. One of the things I appreciate about Honda is that you can take your key and instead of just keeping this as a plastic thing that did nothing, they actually have a key and you can open this up like that and you have a little tool pouch here which I am using to store a tube because this particular bike uses tubes in the tires. A lot of people opt to get uh, tubeless tires and that's probably one of the mods I'll be doing on this bike just because I don't use the, the tubes as much and I prefer tubeless tires. So the handiest things about chain driven bikes is that you can vary the ratio. So if you're to do more highway, you could potentially just go down in the rear sprocket, uh, go up in the front counter sprocket and have it more of a highway capable bike or vice versa. You can make it a little bit more grunty down low by switching the gears around. On a shaft driven bike, you don't have that flexibility. On this left side, you have the same foot peg and then you have a very tiny little shift lever, which is pretty standard because you don't want like a large shift lever so it, it'll break, but it is nice that it even folds. So this bike, as you already know, it's a liquid-cooled, fuel-injected bike. You can see the radiator from here with a fan. It's got quite a bit of access. I can reach the top of the engine just by putting my hand in there. When I bought this bike, it came with a stock seat and this seat. This is Seat Concepts. It's got this grippy platform. It's wider than the stock seat, and you don't slide around. So this lets you do a few more miles than the stock seat. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever ridden a lot of dual sports, but one of the issues is that they have a very narrow seat and very cushy seat. So what that does is that after 100 miles, you're gonna be hurting. This one lets you keep riding just for a little bit more. It's not an entirely super comfortable bike, but you can push this bike to do 200, 300 miles if you want. Let's look at the dashboard and controls. On the left, you have your clutch, very easy to pull. You do have quite a bit of protection for your hands. It's got an aluminum hand guard combined with a, a plastic guard that mostly deflects a, a little bit of wind in the colder months. It's got an aftermarket grip. You have your high beam, you have a hazard button, you have a horn, and you have your turn signal. Very easy, this is pretty standard throughout most bikes. And the, there's, these controls look exactly the same, even on CB500s, you know, NC700s, it's all exactly the same. They're just switching things up into different bikes. Mirrors are extremely adequate, you know, they 
don't, you don't have to fight with your shoulders in order to see what's behind you and the vibration is pretty dampened. Usually when I buy bikes, I never get risers. So you can see the, the previous owner put risers. They're Rocks Speed FX risers, and they lift up the handlebars just a little bit more. What I found is that by having it a little bit higher up, it's easy to stand up and ride, but I'm more of a sit down type of rider, so I don't really use it too much. Handlebars are Evo Windham RM Mid. Um, and they're pro tapers, very high quality stuff, and it looks great having this color. On the right side, of course, you have your throttle, you have your front brake, your start, and your kill switch. Something I appreciate about Honda, a regular fuel cap. This is something that I complain a lot. And of course, the gas tank on this is tiny. It's to his owner put a USB charger, which is very handy to power your phone or GPS. This is something you're starting to see a lot with adventure bikes is having a mount up top over the speedometer so you can put your GPS and phone mount and gadgets. I appreciate this quite a bit. Uh, let's start it up and see how the bike sounds. That's the fuel injection kicking in. Make sure you put it in neutral. bit hard to see with the light but when you have the standard light you don't have access to this one and that's the other one when you switch the high beam so I think for me I've been looking at getting a 250 dual sport for a while and dual sports they tend to hold their value quite a bit so when you consider that you can get one of these bikes used for about four or five thousand dollars I know that the price is high but the demand for dual sports has been extremely high as of lately and the beauty for this is that you can use this as a commuter even though I don't think it's a perfect commuter it's a great bike that's all around use it really shines as a very small dual sport it is heavy it tends to not look heavy because it's a small 250 it does feel extremely heavy if you drop it but when you're riding it it feels very nimble and light. People that travel with this bike all around the world and it says a lot about, about its reliability and whenever you get a bike you're always worried about how well it can cope with high miles if you're touring but this bike has brought on a different use of dual sport. It's people that like touring as opposed to just casual dirt bikers. The bike itself is a little bit on the heavier side but I think most people are going to be using this mostly for getting to trails, riding, and perhaps going on multi-day adventures as opposed to doing very difficult single trail type of rides. It's a very easy, smooth bike. The transmission is perfect, shifts effortlessly, and the best thing is that it gets 80, 90 miles to the gallon. So even if you're paying a lot for gas, this thing could potentially get you through the high gas prices of today. Another beauty about getting the 250 Rally as opposed to the 300 Rally is that you save a lot of money. I bought this used and it tends to be a lot cheaper than the 300 because everybody wants to get the newer 300. The 300 is only like a little bit more displacement, a little bit lighter weight, but I think this one is just about the same. It, um, it's only a matter of the rider. Not only this bike is popular among beginners, it's also a very popular bike among advanced riders that like simple bikes. I think a lot of times we have forgotten how bikes have gotten, how complex they have gotten. So when you get something that's simple like this, it's a breath of fresh air because you can now work on your own bike. There's not any crazy electronics to deal with and that's what beginners want. Even though the seat height is a little bit on the tall side, it's easy to manage. 34 seat height, 35 seat height is not bad compared to the more competitive dual sports. 
This bike is also called the Little Red Pig. So one last thing to do is to take this bike on a short ride and see how she feels. Let's go for a ride on it. Start up is pretty easy. I got the phone for the navigation. Turn the key. It's in neutral. You hear that fuel injection starting which is one of the key benefits of having a little dual sport like this and you just hit the start starts right up this one does have a lithium battery as well so it's even lighter you know it, it's a heavy 250 but I really like how flexible it is I usually let it warm up a bit the way you sit on it by the way it's a uh, I'm not really used to having the my arms at this angle if they feel like an attack position for dirt riding but I'm not really a dirt rider so I always find it a little bit strange and of course when you have something like this you can ride over the grass you'll be shifting a lot with this bike with 11 inches of travel this bike is a little bit hard to flat foot. You would have to be over six feet tall in order to flat foot it. It is really a gem. And the transmission is just so easy to ride. No wonder new riders are getting into this bike. It's just effortless to ride. The thing too, like there's a little corner here. It's not much of a corner, but because of the 21 inch front wheel and 18 rear, I've never really gotten a hang of cornering on a 21 inch front wheel. I just don't like it. You know, like you approach these lights and stuff and you take off, give it full gas and you're really within the speed limit, which is crazy. And you know, in this bike, I don't feel like I'm sitting on top of it. There are bikes when you sit on them, it feels like you're on top of the bike, really. And it feels like the bike is just so far down, but this one, you kind of sit inside. I think also the beauty of these little 250s is that they're great in-town bikes, especially. Everybody thinks that these areas are flush with cash, but flush with cash, but not for the roads. So roads tend to be very much destroyed I feel like I want to like go around corners fast it's just not that type of bike and even the corners that I would take on the Super Tenray and whatever they felt like corners but on this bike because it's so slow they don't feel like corners because the bike itself doesn't seem to go fast enough to really go around corners but you don't get this bike to go around corners so this is the Capitol Beltway. It's a large artery here in the Washington DC area. It loops around the Capitol, goes through Virginia, Maryland, DC. And it's very high speed and I want to see how this bike behaves. On the highway, I'm not very impressed with a 250. You know, even my Ninja 250 was better on the highway. But here we go, 58 miles an hour. It's shaking quite a bit. This is when you start to feel the vibration. I'm at 58 miles an hour. I'm gonna move it to this lane. And you feel vibration from the handlebars and the foot pegs, but not horribly. But at 60 something miles an hour, this bike just does not feel like it's a bike you should be taking on the highway. I don't enjoy this bike at all in this type of environment. And that's that. Took two gallons. 187.5 divided by 2.068. Ninety miles to the gallon, ninety point sixty six. Ninety miles to the gallon. That is really incredible. A hundred eighty eight, and I had uh, 0 0.7 gallons left. I think one of the issues with this bike in city riding, I love the visibility. I love the dexterity that it has. And I also love that it's a um, slow bike. 
And when you have a slow bike like this, it's a lot easier to kind of live with because you don't have to put up with a lot of things. Like uh, getting speeding tickets. But this bike, it does not have that. It, uh, it brakes fine, but the problem is it dives in quite a bit in the front. And this is the non-ABS model. So if you're really interested in getting the top of the line, you want to get the ABS version of this if you're going to do commuting. City riding in this area is this. It's like looking around for a passenger, for a tourist, stopping, making sure that you don't run anybody over. Look, that guy's camping. And having good brakes just to avoid tourists is good. So much off the market for this bike as well. And the best thing, it's kind of like the 50cc scooter craze. You can get a bike like this and essentially if you are into like modding things you can mod this bike very cheaply now imagine you get a car you get a sport bike the higher these cc's the more things cost so things for this bike are inexpensive look at my lights you see that that's my high beam right there that's cool yeah it doesn't sound good inside this tunnel though it sounds really crappy actually well guys, that is the Honda CRF 250 Rally. This is a great bike for beginners and advanced riders. I know you hear that a lot, but I've been riding for a while and this bike, it gets you back to where you started when bikes were simple before you lost all track of motorcycling and you just started buying bigger and bigger bikes like Gold Wings. It's nice to go back and have a 250 Dual Sport in your garage. If you have sport bikes, sport touring machines, a little dual sport like this is very flexible. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with it. It opens up your riding style. You can venture out into the countryside and explore gravel roads, take it on single tracks, and even do some light touring on this. There's riders that ride around the world on it, but this bike for me is a bike that I'll trailer to a place like Colorado and ride it around and then trailer it back. I think one of the downsides of this bike is that when you live in an area, and I live in the DC metro area, there's very few places to really ride a dual sport off-road. You would have to really go two hours out in order to start seeing gravel and some trails. So that's why this bike, I wouldn't really consider it to be a commuter, even though it would make it an excellent commuter. Another really big downside is that this bike is so sought after and so striking as far as the way it looks is that you can't really have this bike in the city because it is a thief magnet. This bike would get stolen in a heartbeat in Washington DC. That is 100%. So you have to be a little bit more careful where you take this bike and where you leave it out. But it's a very manageable bike. The engine doesn't make a lot of power. It's like 20 something horsepower. And it seems like it's not a lot, but it makes sense. Like you never get in trouble with the power. And of course, if you've ridden off road, you don't want a lot of power because they'll get you in trouble. It's the same thing with sport bikes. If you get a 1000 CC, it's a lot easier to ride on the road than a 1000 CC dual sport off road. You have to have a whole lot more skill to ride off-road than on the road, I think. I'm mostly a road rider, but riding on the dirt, you want to start out small. Even though this is kind of like a very heavy bike, you'll cope really well with some single tracks and uh, dirt roads. And I would use this mostly to explore dirt roads as opposed to single track, but that's just me. And I also like the idea that this bike gets 80, 90 miles to the gallon so even though the range, even though the tank is small at 2.7 gallons, the range is adequate. You're talking about 150, 160 miles on the tank at 80 miles to the gallon, 70, 80, 90. So really good. And downside is that these still cost quite a bit of money for a dual sport, but dual sports tend to hold their value quite a bit. But that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed the CRF 250 Rally. 
uh, review. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.